Around two years ago, on this channel, we showed you how to remove a jet pump from a sea -Doo. Now, given that two years have gone by, I figure it's about time for me to show you what you do once you've got your jet pump off. Because two years, I'm ready to put this thing back together. So the first thing we need to do is remove this end cap. So these are five millimeter hex. So grab yourself an Allen key, a hex key, whatever you want to call it, and crack these loose. All right, with those three out, we're gonna to want to pry this end cap off. Now we need to be careful because whatever goop is in here, I don't really want going everywhere. So I'm going to take this over and pop this off in a drain pan. But basically you can see there's all little dots here on the bottom. You can get a flat screwdriver into and just gently work it, go all the way around. It may take a few times going all the way around, just pry up a little bit at a time and that'll pop up. It's an O-ring seal. So that O-ring is just kind of pinched and holding it in place now that the bolts are removed. So I'll be right back with this after it's got no more oil in it. Okay, back onto there. And see our nasty grease down in here? So we're gonna scoop all of that out before we reassemble it. But for now, we'll set that to the side. And we need a 12 millimeter hex to go on the top of this and take off the impeller with an impact. Grab yourself some ear protection. 12 millimeter. Not gonna do it. I know my hose selection here is, uh, leaves a little to be desired for maximum power output, but that's okay. This is an IR gun. It'll handle it. What did I tell you? Ingersoll ran. They make some proper tools. All right. So now as you can see our impeller is halfway out. We need to get it all the way out. Smells like dead fish. There we go. Okay, and now if you look in here, you can see the uh, damage to this wear ring. Uh, pretty substantial. It looks like uh, some cavitation damage or just erosion. It's really kind of bizarre. This has to come out. And we're going to put our 12 millimeter socket in here. So that way we can set this on here and have a working platform here. Now let's peel our seal off of here so that we don't accidentally damage this seal in our process, but we need to remove this wear ring. Now, this is a plastic pump, so we can't get too rowdy with uh, how we're gonna remove it. These screws aren't on every pump. A lot of times you don't see these. All right. Let's just see for the fun of it. Oh. That makes this so easy. 
You never see him come out like that. That is, that is a rare occurrence to just be able to grab it and slide it up out. Uh, a lot of times these are kind of a press fit, so they squish right down in there and you have to either use a Dremel to cut a slot in it or a chisel to break parts away until you can kind of s like squeeze the two halves over each other to make it smaller and pull it out. So that's pretty cool that this one came out all in one piece. Now we're going to go get our new wear ring out of the freezer and pop it in here. So I'll be right back from the freezer. Mmm, bacon. No, we're here for this wear ring. Hard to see. It's for a non-supercharged machine. So this is the wear ring we need. New wear ring, fresh from the freezer. Now with this, we gotta work fast. So, while this is still cold, have to look, see there's a beveled side and a flat side, flat side goes down. And we need to get this in before it warms up because it won't slide in like that. Once it's warm, it will expand and be a very snug fit. So now with that in there, we're gonna let that expand for a little bit, come back. Um, we're gonna look into putting our screws back in here and here. I just realized that my microphone wasn't working for the entirety of putting this back together. So, with our impeller torqued to 100 foot-pounds and everything ready to go with our bolts in here so the wear ring stays in place, I'm going to refill this with gear oil. Now, grease is what a lot of these come with. Gear oil was used in some of the older ones and there's different thought processes on which is better. Personally, I kind of like the gear oil better. Um, it lubricates better, deals with some of the heat, the friction stuff better. Um, but it does have a problem that if it, if you have a leak, if one of your seals is bad, the gear oil is going to come out and then it'll ruin your pump. Whereas the grease might stay in there and just get diluted and kind of nasty. So I'm putting gear oil back in this because I'm pretty sure this doesn't leak. Um, none of the grease looked like it was water contaminated, so I'd say we're pretty good in that uh, situation. So I'm going to refill this with grease, and I do want to mention it is very important to torque the impellers. Don't just run it down with an impact. What I've seen happen before when somebody ran an impeller on with an impact is that it stripped out the threads in the impeller and on the uh, impeller shaft inside the jet pump and so because on a sea dude the drive shaft is fully floating it's supported by the crankshaft of the engine on one side and the impeller and jet pump bearings on the other side when they stripped that out the impeller could walk around side to side as well as forwards and backwards and so under hard acceleration that impeller would push forward which pushed on the drive shaft forward which pushed the crankshaft forward and it wiped out the uh, thrust washers in the bottom end of the Sea-Doo engine, destroyed the case, destroyed the crank, it totaled their engine basically, um, all because they didn't take the five minutes to properly torque their impeller down. So, torque your impellers and refill them with oil or grease. That's your call. Torquing them, not optional. Torque it no matter what, with a torque wrench, not an impact. Okay, that's getting unruly. All right, so we got gear oil in there. We're going to let that settle for a bit and see if it seeps down through the bearings a little bit. I see a few bubbles, so we'll let this sit for a minute and fill it up until it's 
flush with the top and stays there. Kind of squish that to get it past the uh, O-rings there. Start our bolts in here. If there's any question if that impeller is a tight fit on that new wear ring, I think that noise tells you. Well there you have it. This pump has a nice fresh wear ring, fresh oil, everything's been looked over, and it seems healthy. We just need to put our seal back on the front here. And that is all there is to it. Hopefully this has been helpful in getting you a new wear ring put in your jet pump so that your sea will accelerate and have the top speed that it should. Um, everything that you need uh, to do this is linked down in the description, so check that out. If you need these things, new wear ring or the tools to do this, it's all linked down there so that you can pick this stuff up and take care of your machine all by yourself. Thanks for watching.